Come on. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights me, life down, he's night, night. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Come on, there's no shadow. So shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after you. Come on, there's no wall. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall. So all you won't kick down, lie you won't take it out, coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't take it out, coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming out to me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't take it out, coming out to me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And oh, it chases me down, fights me, I'm found. Everybody said amen. Come on. I want to kind of go old school. Go back to the heart of worship. Because when the music fades, and all is stripped away, and I simply come. Come on, longing just to bring. Longing just to bring something that's of work. Something that's of work. That will bless your heart. Come on, I'll bring you more. And I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself. It's not what you have required. Come on, you search much deeper within. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. Come on, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. See the song about you, Lord. Yeah. Come on, when the music fades, when the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring, longing just to bring something that's worth. That will bless your heart. I'll bring you more. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself. Even now what you have required. Come on, you search much deeper within. You search much deeper within. You the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. Come on, I'm coming back. 
I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Father God, I pray that God, as we enter into your presence tonight, that God, we would strip it all away. God, we want to hear from you. God, we want to see you. God, we want to just be a part of what you're doing. God, break down the walls. Break down the barriers that keep us from you. God, no more lights. God, no more, no more stuff. God, it's just raw and real. And God, this is what we say to you. Come on, coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I needed. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Man, so good, so good. Hey, if you are joining us for the first time tonight, we are so thankful that you are here. We went through a whole lot. I believe that God is uh, doing a lot of things in a lot of people's lives. I've gotten to um, I've gotten to talk with with a few with a few people that are a part of the group, and they've just kind of gotten to share their experience about what this group means to them and and what God is doing in their life. Um, just in spite of all the chaos and and, and all the craziness, uh, I, again, like what I talked about in in, in the video to, today, you know, there's had a gentleman that was just talking about as a part of this group that just said. I'm not just listening on Tuesday and not feeding on it during the week. I can't stop thinking about the words that are being said, the things that are being done, and I'm just constantly eating on it during the week. And man, that's just, that's just an incredible testament uh, to what God is doing when you just step out in obedience. Again, we, we really didn't want to do this. We don't feel qualified to do this, but I'll tell you what, God has has allowed um has allowed some great things to to come through uh this this group and i pray that it continues to grow um and continues to um just let god do what he you know do what he does which is change lives uh but tonight we're wrapping up a series called stop and trust stop and trust and for again for y'all that have not been a part i just want to give you the points i'm not going to get into to every single thing that we that we've discussed <clears throat> but Here's the deal. The trust is an acronym and stop. You know, the first T in trust will stop trying to be good. We cannot do enough good in, earn, in order to earn God's favor. So God has did for us what we could not do. We need to stop resisting his plan because God is putting us exactly where he wants us to be to be most effective. So stop trying to manufacture or or make things more complicated than what it has to be just lean into what god is doing because he's placed you exactly where you need to be to be most effective the third was we need to stop underestimating the ability of god we put god in a box god does not fit in a box and he is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask and or could imagine abundantly more than we could ask or imagine. And if you will, again, lean into what God is doing and anticipate and expect God to do great things, he will do great things. And then last week, we talked about stop simply being satisfied with the status quo. Stop being simply satisfied with the status quo. God has not called us into mediocrity. 
He's called us to be great because he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Now, listen, that does not mean that we are not still struggling with sin and still struggling with the things that, that we were before. But here's the deal. God has saved us from that. So we need to stop placing our full thought processes into our sin and start leaning into the grace of God and allow him to change us as we continue to, again, press in to his presence. So again, stop simply being satisfied with the status quo and allow God to do in you what he's called you to do. So in this time, we talked about again last week, what is the one thing or two things or maybe three things, but at least the number one thing that you believe that God has gifted you with. And with that gift, what are you doing with it? Who has confirmed that gift in you? Because we talked about last week, the gift that God has given you was not meant for you. It was meant to be used to pull and bring people into the presence of God for his glory. You may be the missing puzzle piece to somebody's puzzle. You may be the church that somebody needs to go to. You may be the Bible that someone needs to read. And the gift that God has given you is supposed to be used not for you, but for him in order to help change lives that will change the world. That is what God is calling you to do. And tonight, tonight, we're going to sandwich this dude. We're going to put the we're going to put the last piece of the bread on this sandwich. And tonight we're going to stop talking about it and we're going to go do it. We need to stop talking and go do it. So as we move into that point tonight, I want to ask you this question and get ready to uh to fill the feed and the chat feed with your response. When you hear the word faith, when you hear the word faith, what does faith mean? What do you think faith means? Let's go. Start lighting up the chat feature. What do you believe faith means? Trusting. Hoping what is not seen. Walking blindly, believing. Listen to God's voice above all the noise. Believe, believing in what I can't see. Somebody else, come on. What do you think faith means? Come on, somebody else. Not needing to know, knowing God can do the impossible. Trust, trusting. All of those. The ability to move without knowing. Believing, trusting in something regardless of circumstances, stepping out into the unknown. All of those are amazing characteristics and responses to faith. Trusting the unknown. Love it. Here's the deal. The word trust is to be confident. The word means to adhere to in the form of knowing that it is true. That it is true so here's what i ask my students because the bible tells us this it is impossible for god to lie it's impossible for god to lie why is it impossible for god to lie because it would be a contradicting or contradicting or contradictedness to his character God will not do anything that contradicts the goodness of who he is. So sin is not in God. It is not in God. So God can't even be a part of it. So here's the deal. God will not do anything or say anything that contradicts who he is as a perfect being. So it's impossible for God to lie. So if it is impossible for God to lie, somebody give me the answer. What is God? If it's impossible for God to lie, what is he? Truth. Come on. He even claimed it. He is true. So here's the deal. If something is true, if something is true, basically, if someone is true, yes or no, answer it in the feature. Can or does it make that person a trustworthy person if they cannot lie? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. That's the whole point of what I want to talk about tonight. 
Faith is the substance or confidence in what we know to be true, even though we can't see it. Listen to me. Faith is the confidence of knowing that what we believe is true, even though we can't see it. Jesus even said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if God can't lie, then we know for a fact that he is a trustworthy person. He is worthy of trust because he is truth. So with faith, with faith, we know, we know that God is who he says he is, and we can rely on that point alone. So tonight, when we talk about stop talking about it and go do it, listen, faith is an action. Faith is an action. I love, I love what Mark Batterson said. He said, it's been said by Mark Batterson, he said that we are educated beyond our faith. We, are, we have a tendency to be educated beyond our faith, meaning we have a head knowledge, but we're heart, our hearts are not truly receiving what we say we believe. So with that, get ready in the chat feature. What keeps us from stepping out in faith? What keeps us from stepping out if I love it? Fear, 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 fear. Come on, what else? Ourselves, that's a great answer. Lack of trust, fear of failure, our minds, pride, fear, our past. So I love this, judgment, I like it. Past experiences taken, I love this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, st I'm, I'm gonna go off of this one real quick. Here's the deal. It's our negative experiences that have a tendency to alter what we know to be true. Let me say that again. Our negative experiences has a tendency to alter what we know to be true. And so the more we focus on our negative experiences, the less we put our faith and focus in Jesus. See, if we so concentrate on what happened in the past, listen, I'm not saying that we forget it. I'm not saying we'll ever forget it. But it says strip off every weight that slows us down. You ready for that? Look, check it out. Strip off every weight that slows us down. Because it's the things of the past. If we give them power in our life, it will prevent us from ever getting where God wants you to go. If we don't strip off the things that we allow to have power in our life, we will never do the things that God called us to do. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. If we, listen, I'm going to keep hammering that one real quick. If we give power to negative experiences in our life that alters what we know to be true about God, our focus is not in the Father, our focus is in our fear. Come on. Somebody, I need some hand claps for that one. That was a good one, okay? Come on, somebody help me. Let me preach this. Thank you, Diana. Come oh, wait, on. Wait, wait, wait. I can do it too. You can do it too. Come on, Jess. Help me preach this, sis. Boom. Thank Got you, Jesus. It. All right. So here's the deal. If we focus on our past, rather than focusing on the Father, fear will prevent us from getting where God wants us to go. So here's the deal. Faith. I love this. In James 2.18, James 2.18, faith without works is dead. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Now, most people take this as this is the means to my salvation. Not at all. Remember, we can't do enough good to earn our salvation. Jesus did it for us, and it's our faith and faith alone in the work of Jesus that saves us. If somebody did not hear that, I'm going to say that one more again. We have got to stop thinking that my works or some prayer or something saves me. No, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. The work of Jesus 
the work of Jesus that he did upon the cross for us was the only thing that could satisfy the sin debt that you and I have. And by placing our faith in Jesus, placing our faith in Jesus is the only thing that can save you and I, not your works, not anything else. So listen, what I'm telling you is show me your faith without works. I'll show them by my works. This is not the means to your salvation. This is the outcome of your salvation. I do now because of what has been done for me. Come on, somebody. I now do. I now show. I now live because of what Jesus has done for me. I'm going to prove evidence that my life has been changed as I actively participate in the faith factor of my salvation. I am going to prove to you and show you that I believe what I believe by the things that I do, not in order to earn, but because I've already received. Somebody help me in here today, okay? Listen, I want to do because of what's been done. I have moved from I have to do this to I no longer want to do this. See, when we get in the beginning, my baby girl is preaching back here. See, in the beginning of our baby-like faith, we think that it's just about a bunch of rules and regulations. So we have this mentality that I can't do or I'm no longer allowed to. But when we continue in the sanctification process, meaning that the more I spend time in the presence of God, the more I become like him, I move from I can't to I don't want to because of what he's done for me. Does that make sense? Somebody, can somebody say amen for me in the chat? Does that make sense? We're good. I see the hands. I see the hands. So this is what I'm saying to you is if God has given you a gift, which I know he has, because we talked about it in second Corinthians, right? That God has given every single one of us a gift. And that gift is not for you. It's for you to use in order to fulfill your purpose that draws people into the presence of God. So my question to you then is, what are you doing to prepare for what God is doing in and through you for the fulfilling of your purpose and to bring people into the purpose, I mean, into the presence of God? So faith without works is dead. So show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. James 1.22 says this, do not be hearers only, but doers of the word. How many of us can I can I just let's let's get real, just with a hand with a hand on the on the chat. How many of us have a tendency of just being comfortable, just listening, and not doing anything? It's a whole lot more comfortable that way. Come on, somebody help me, right? Oh, never. I get it. I hear you. Never. No, not me. No, I love it. Listen to me. It's a whole lot more comfortable. Can I just tell you that it never fails when we get on this call, when we get on this call, about an hour and a half before we do this, all hell breaks loose in my house, okay? <laughs> Everything goes you know where, okay? It just goes craziness. And I look at Jess and I'm going, is, is, is this real life? Like, is, my kids are jumping off the roof my baby won't sleep. There's yelling. There's yelling. And there's yelling. Okay, there's a whole lot of yelling. And it's coming from Coda. Okay? <laughs> it's coming from Coda. Now, what I'm saying is, listen, it's a whole lot easier to not to not move and do things because, listen, the moment that you step out in faith and do something for the Lord, guess what? All hell is breaking loose because Satan does not want you to succeed. But he has not given you a spirit of fear. Come on, somebody. He's not given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of power, love, 
and a sound mind. I love power because the power that he's talking about is dunamis, dynamite, explosive, supernatural power to punch Satan in the mouth. Come on. You just want to punch him in the mouth and to move forward with love for the people. I ain't got no love for Satan. He's, he's, he's a punk. And a sound mind, and this is what it means by a sound mind, knowing that you can rest on the fact that God is trustworthy and his word is true and it will not return void. So whatever God is telling you, listen to me, and listen to me when I say this, whatever God is telling you to do, do it. But do it only if it aligns with the word of God. I'm, I got to emphasize that tonight. If God is telling you to do something, what he is telling you will not contradict the word of God or the character of God. So if all of a sudden God is telling you to do something that is contrary to the word of God, listen to me, people. It ain't Jesus, okay? It's not the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Spirit. Well, God made an exception for me. You have lost your darn mind, okay? Because God ain't going to contradict the goodness of who he is. So make sure that whatever he is telling you, it is aligned with the word of God. You cannot expect to get a revelation from God if you're not willing to open up the word of God. Come on, because he is the word of God. If you think you got a revelation, you better make sure that it aligns with the word of God. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Jesus. All right? So check this out. Check this out. Also, moving into that point, stop talking about it and do it. Remember this. Remember this. Romans 6, 10, and 11. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you if you have in re indeed received him. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. Y'all, can somebody help me tonight? Listen to me. We are not living like Jesus is living in us. What would it look like? Somebody help me. Somebody help me, okay, in the chat feature. What would you do if you really believed that Jesus was living in you? How would you live your life? How would you live your life if you really, truly believed with no doubting that the Spirit of God is in you and you have the same Spirit of God in you? Somebody help me. Come on. Fearless. I hear you. Somebody else. How would you live your life? Come on, somebody help me. No fear that I'd fail or fall, okay? Peace, I love that. I love that. Somebody else. Helping others. Preaching to all. Joyful. Confidence. I'd be healing people. Come on, somebody. Living love, ignoring the, the flesh, emotions towards other. Yep. Obedient. Wow. Love people no matter what. Doing for anyone and all people without fear of judgment. Preaching all day, every day. Love that, Chrissy Ricketts. I hear you, girl. No anxiety. Worry-free. Come on. I love it. Listen. I, I got I, I, I to just tell you this. He already lives in you. He's already given you everything you need for godly living. That's what, that's what the apostle Peter told us in 2 Peter. He said, he has given you everything you need for godly living. Everything you need. So the power that you need is already in you. The peace that you have or that you need, guess what? He's already in you because he is the prince of peace. The confidence that you need is already in you. 
the victory that you need, it's already been done for you. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. You wanna know our biggest problem? You wanna know why we don't live the way we should live? Because of us. It's because of us. We have a tendency of getting in the way of being or seeing a movement of God. I'm curious, how many of you truly want to be used as a movement of God? Can I, can I, get, a, can I get a hand clap? Can I get a, how many of you? Me, I love that. Some, just somebody say me in the, in the chat, I love it, me. Come on, hand raise, I hear you, I do. Come on, me. Listen to me. If you want to be a movement of God, rest on the fact that God has already made you a movement because he is the movement in you. He is the movement in you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. It's not you who is doing it. It is him through you that is doing it. So when I say stop talking about it and go do it, know the fact that God is in it if he has given you the gift. You can rest assured that God is going to use you because he's already told you that he is. He said, go ye therefore into the world making disciples baptizing them name in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is what we are called to do. Y'all, if you are trying to figure out what is my purpose, too many of us are focusing on what's my purpose and missing the fact that your purpose is to glorify God and to further his kingdom. How you do that is based on the gifting and design that God has created you for. See, we're getting purpose and position mixed up. Stop worrying about the position. Well, if I had this platform, or if I had this platform, or if I was here, listen to me, can I tell you something? I'm talking about me right now. I'm, I'm talking about me. So many times I miss out on just fulfilling my purpose because I'm too worried about the position. God, if you'll just get me here. God, if you'll let me go preach this part. If you'll let me go sing over here. If you'll let me go do this. If you'll let me do this. And God is saying, listen to me, I didn't call you to that right now. I've called you to this right here. And I think we get messed up because we're looking and, oh, here, let, let me go squirrel a moment for a minute, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm going to sidestep that for a moment. Not only are we looking at a position, we're looking at somebody else's profile. It's called a comparison game. We too busy looking at somebody else's stuff and then wonder, well, wait a minute. If I had what they had, or if I had the money they had, or if I had the platform they had, come on. I love that. Comparison is the thief of joy. Christina, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Come on, just drop it. We're too busy comparing somebody else's stories to our own. When God has not written their story for your life. Listen, I'm preaching to me. I'm preaching to me right now. You may be getting a little bit of this, but I'm preaching to me. Because I get frustrated going, God, why am I not being able to reach more people? Like, I want to reach more people. God, I want to get people saved. I'm a treasure hunter. I'm a treasure finder. Okay, I'm telling you, you're not going to outwork me bringing people to Jesus. I'm not going to let you, but I am going to encourage you. Okay, listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I want you to prepare because God wants you to reach people for Jesus. So don't just be hearers of the word, but doers. Now, let's move and shift for a moment. What do you believe? What do you believe that God is telling you to do in this very moment? As we've talked about this, I'm curious to see where your mindset is. 
What is God saying to you right now? Go ahead in the chat. What do you believe God is saying to you right now? Shut up and listen. <laughs> I love it. Somebody else. Forgive. Let it go. Focus on me. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I love it. Remember, we talked about last week, comfort leads to complacency. Comfort leads to complacency. And God is saying, I want to make you uncomfortable so that I can actually move through you to trust him wholly. Wait and see and watch what I'm doing. Get out of your own way. I love it. Start singing your heart out, girl. Lean into discomfort. I love it. Get back to the basics. You know what? That's such a good word. That's a good word, Dana. That's a great word. I love that because, man, to me, my mind immediately goes to football. Okay? It goes to football. Play football in college. But one of the things that the coach always said was stick to the basics. Basics win games. Fundamentals win games. Y'all, fundamentals of the faith is what drives you to be successful successful in the sense of doing what God has called you to do. It's the basics. What is the basics? Love God, love people. Come on. Somebody say it. Love God, love people. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Listen, that's, what, that's the basics. Love God and love people. Why do we make it so much harder? Somebody give me an answer. Why do we make it so much more difficult than that? Sin? Somebody else, come on. Why do we make it so much more difficult? Pride? Because we think it can't be that simple. That's a good one. We overthink it. We get in the way. Not sticking to the basics, right? We think instead of trust, human nature. All of those are right answers. Too busy. Letting everyday life get in the way. All those are right answers. All of those are right answers. Need for control. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, some, some, somebody, somebody just got upset. That's exactly right. That's another good answer. I think, man, we have a tendency to try to control the situation. And we don't have any control. And can I tell you something? Listen, I believe that's one of the major demons. Now, now I'm, now I'm going to tell you this, okay? You may not agree with me on this. And listen, please do not hear what I did not say, okay? Please do not hear what I did not say in the comment that I'm about to make to you, okay? Not every anxious, anxiety, fear-based state is a chemical imbalance of some sort. Now listen, I believe that, man, there are mental, mental instabilities and things that people deal with on a daily basis that are real, okay? Listen, I'm not saying they're not real, okay? So don't hear what I'm not saying. But I will tell you this. I truly believe that most of our anxiety and the things that we get upset about and the things that we fear and face are spiritual warfare and demonic presences that are rendering us ineffective for the Lord. Not every physical state, right? Or not every, everything that is physical can be dealt with physically. I believe that some of our physical states are truly a spiritual battle. When you read in scripture, when you read in scripture about some of the, listen to me, mental illnesses that we discuss or talk about were, dem, were demonic forces, spirit. Listen, read the scripture. I'm not just making it up. But a lot of the things that were dealt with were demonic. That's why Jesus spent most of his time casting out demons, casting out demons. 
Spiritual warfare, the spiritual realm is real. I'm not trying to freak you out. I'm just telling you that it's real, that it's real. I get it. And listen to me. I'm just telling you, listen, Liz, I'm, I'm not telling you that what you're not, what you're facing is not, listen, I'm, I'm please y'all, because this is a very sensitive topic. So I don't want anyone going, oh, well, you're telling me that I don't have a problem. I'm just, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. So don't hear what I'm not saying. What I am stating is that, listen, a spiritual warfare that's messing with your mind can only be fixed by getting into the presence of God. Think about Legion for a moment. Legion had 100,000 demons in it. That's a whole lot of demons. That's, that's a whole lot of stuff. And I'm going to tell you what, no physical tool or no amount of physical tools could ever save Legion from something that only Jesus could set him free from. And what we focus on has a tendency to control us. And sometimes our control or lack thereof brings on the factor of missing out on what God is wanting to do with us. And so I love the, the second part of what, of what Liz said. She said, it started with prayer on my knees, y'all. I'm telling you, the disciples, when they tried to cast out a demon, looked out, looked at Jesus and said, why could we not cast this demon now? And it goes back to this, because this could only be done with much fasting and prayer. Much fasting and prayer. Come on, let's celebrate that, y'all. That's amazing. Amen. I have no more anxiety. That's that praise God is what I was trying to say by the power of prayer. Seriously, took all it took it all away in a day. Now, praise God. I'm telling you, that's amazing. Now, it don't always happen that way, but for you, Liz, praise God. That's a testimony. You need to share that because I'm telling you, more people struggle with anxiety and anxiousness and fear more than anything that we talk about today. And I'm telling you, it's stuff like that that God can use because it's a testimony that most people don't have. So I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Please share that. So listen, I'm going to say it one more time because this is a sensitive topic that we deal with daily, okay? I'm not saying that everyone who is, is, who needs medication or blah, 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 is, is, it's not a real thing. No, it is a real thing, y'all. It is a real thing. And sometimes it does take a physical tool to take some of those things away, but not all of them are that type of thing. It is a spiritual battle. And Jess will talk to you. She's been, she knows she's dealt with some things and she's dealing with some things. And I'm telling you, Satan wants to do anything and everything he can to render you ineffective because listen, the moment that you step into your purpose is the moment that Satan wants to steal your power. But the last time I checked, he can't steal it. He can't have it because Jesus said, once you're in my hand, there is nothing that can snatch you out. Zero. Nothing can snatch you out. If you are truly in me and you are one of mine, there's nothing that can snatch you out of my hand. And so I'm going to finish up with this point. Wow, that went really fast tonight. That went really fast tonight. Check this out. In Romans 4.3, in Genesis 15.6, because Romans 4.3 was actually quoting Genesis 15.6, Abraham believed, and it was a credit to him as righteousness. Abraham believed, and it was accredited to him as righteousness. Listen, y'all. Listen. Our faith is what saves us and gives us the ability to be most effective in ways that we cannot apart from Christ. Number one, by having a relationship with Jesus, by having a relationship with the father, by going through Jesus. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and give it to you abundantly. Let me help you understand what the word abundant means. It means to complete a circuit, to complete a circuit. 
My dad will tell you he works with electrical stuff all the time. Anytime that there is an open circuit, right? There's no information being relayed. It's only until the circuit is closed that it has the ability to continue to have information being relayed. See, the problem, y'all, is our circuit, meaning that the information that we need to be able to hear from God has been broken, has been broken. So the moment that Jesus came and put the cross as a bridge in between our circuit to complete that circuit was the moment that we had the information that we needed in order to live the abundant life. So Jesus came in to close the circuit. He came in to help us receive what we need in order to live the life to the fullest. It's called regeneration. Regeneration means a rebirth, a rebirth to be made what we needed to be before sin destroyed us. So when the Holy Spirit comes in you, he gives you a gift. And that gift that you have been given is to be used for the glory of God, to go and create disciples, to preach the word and baptize people. Listen, every single one of you, I'm going to go through this list because we got three pages. Everybody that's on this call, I need you to hear something real quick. Okay, I'm looking through all of it. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you. You don't have to be a pastor in order to reach people for Jesus and baptize them. Guess what? God called you to be the church. God called you to be the church. And remember what we talked about last week. You don't have to know everything in order to share something. With your gift, the responsibility that God has given you is to go make disciples. That is your job. And the question in your mind is, then how do I do that? How do I make a disciple? By getting in the word of God and doing what Jesus did. We do what God does. We say what God said. We live like God lived. That's the whole point. Listen, if you're not living that way, ask yourself, am I getting into the presence of God so that he is saturating me in order to overflow out of me? See, let me tell you what a sponge does. A sponge was never meant to just hold it all in. A sponge was meant to absorb and then be poured out to be absorbed again. That's what happens when you get a sponge and you're trying to get water out, you soak up the sponge, then you go and get the water out and then you go get some more water. That's the point. That's what Jesus is doing in you. You are just a conduit for what God wants to do in and through you. You are just the means for God to, oh, I'm just, woo! You are just a conduit, okay? You are a means for God to be seen and for you to be used. Why? To point people to the glory of God. If you won't, who will? If you won't use your gift, who will? And listen, I'm going to wrap up with this point right here. Jesus said this. Jesus said, I, what you laughing at? Oh, I, you killing me. Squirrel. Yeah, you the squirrel. You being a squirrel. So here's the deal. I'm wrapping up the moment. I'm wrapping up. I'm sorry. In the, in the account or the story of the talents, in the story of the talents, let me tell you what Jesus said. I didn't say it, okay? So if you want to get upset with somebody as I'm about to wrap up this point, I need you to go straight to the throne room and get upset with Jesus, okay? Because I didn't say it. I'm just relaying the message. If you won't use your talent, I promise you God will take it away and give it to somebody who will. I didn't say it. He did. He said, you worker of iniquity, depart from me for I never knew you. You buried your talent. I didn't say it, okay? I didn't say it. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. I'm calling, I love you, Liz. I don't, I love you, but I'm calling you out. Listen to me. 
You are a somebody because he has saved you to be a somebody. He has saved you in order to use you to be used in a way that's going to glorify him the way he designed you. Get me preaching in here today. That's not just for you, Liz. That's for everybody on this call. Listen to me. God wants to use you. Oh, it's a good song. Oh, my bad. Come on, man. You got to, hey, you set me up. You set me up. Come on. It's a good song. Dang. Okay. I, I still love you, though. I'm still giving you call out, okay? I'm like, hold up. Okay, so if it wasn't for Liz, it was for somebody else on the call, okay? Man, you set me up, girl. Set me up. Dang. Okay. So anyway, that's for somebody on this call. Oh, by the way, real quick, real quick, because I got to fix something from last week. I got, I got to fix this. I don't, I, listen, I don't know if they're on this call. I'm not going to call them out by name. Remember last week, for those of you who are on, we thought we were getting hacked. Y'all remember what I was talking about? And I went, I went off and was just like, oh, that person needs to get saved, blah, 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 right? Okay, come to find out this person was invited by somebody uh, from the group. She is saved, and, and I had to go back and fix it all, okay? So I went crazy. I went, I went off because I was like, oh, no, we're getting hacked, blah, blah, blah. So I just want you to know that the person that was, that was coming in last week, they were going to be a part of the group. Uh, but uh, but they anyway. They will probably never return. No, they are. They were supposed to come back this week. Uh, and, and, I, and I got crazy. And I was just like, oh, no. And just, you know how I get. You know, it's either on or off. And so we kicked them off. And I had to apologize for kicking them off and, and all that other stuff. But anyway, they are saved. They do love Jesus. They actually hit a screen share button and just messed us all up. And so we told them not to do that again. Uh, so, so I just wanted you to know, they, they, I had to eat some crow. I had to eat humble pie. So we weren't getting attacked. I am, uh, it wasn't China. Okay. It wasn't China. Christina, thank you, Jesus. All right. So anyway, all right. So back on to my, on to my last point. God is wanting to use you. And I want you to, I want you to do this. Stop talking about it and do it. Okay. If you're looking for an excuse why not to do it, you'll always find one. But if you are wanting the presence of God in your life and the, and, and the, I'm trying to look for the right word to say, and the blessing of God in your life, be obedient to what God has given you and calling you to do and just go do it. Because if you will, you will experience God in a way that you've never experienced him before. I'm going to say, get it. Y'all say, got it. Get it. Got, got it. it. Put it in the chat. Got it. Okay. So uh, there you go. All right. Got it. Got it. Back to Oak Ridge, Come right? on. That's right. That's right. Lord laughing. She knows what's up. Hey, so here's what I want to make sure you've got. Okay. Before, before we wrap it up, listen, Stop and trust. So write these down real quick if you don't have them, okay? Stop. The first T is trying to be good, okay? Stop trying to be good. There's not enough good that you can do. Trying tarnishes the gift of grace. Trying tarnishes the gift of grace. The R, stop re resisting his plan. He is placing you right where you need to be to be most effective. Stop, the you, is underestimating his ability. He is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. <coughs> the S, stop being satisfied with the status quo. Comfort leads to complacency. Come on, comfort leads to complacency. And then tonight was, stop talking about it and go do it. Faith is an action. Liz, I'm still mad at you. You set me up. You could have told me it was a song. I still love you, though. I got me preaching. All to, all to, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yo, this has been an incredible, incredible night. We're going to end with some prayer. Listen, last week I was trying to like get everybody's prayer in. 
Uh, forgive me for not, if I missed any of you last week, um, it's a whole lot of praying. You know, it's a whole lot of trying to get everybody's, get everybody's uh, prayer requests. So um, just listen, I want you to do this tonight, okay? I want you to do this tonight. In the group, in the group, in the Facebook group, I want you to reach out. That way everybody can kind of see it. And I want everybody to have an opportunity. If you have got a prayer request that you really want us to pray about, will you please put it in the group? Put it in the group on Facebook. That way everybody can see it. Everybody can remember it. And we can, we can pray for you that way. It just took a lot of time for me to try to go through and I miss some people. And I don't, I don't want to miss your prayer request because it's, it's important, okay? It's very important. And so I just want you to know that, okay? So again, go to the Facebook group and just type in, uh, I love that. Jess just, just did it. She said, just post your prayer request below. And uh, that way we can, we can all see it and we can all pray for you. Listen, I want to pray us out tonight. I am so grateful for you. We're going to continue to meet next week. Uh, I know God's got some, got some things that we're still going to do. And uh, we're going to keep preaching and, 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 and singing. So I want to pray for you. And then we will wrap it up. God, we love you. Daddy, we are thankful for you. God, we, we cannot do this life without you. God, I pray that you will just continue to, to break down the walls and the barriers in our heart that prevent us from experiencing you the way you want us to experience you. God, you want us to have a relationship. God, this is not, this is not a, 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 a thing to work for. It's a thing to enjoy, and it's a life to enjoy. And God, we want to experience you the way we read about it. So Lord, I pray. If there's anything that hinders us or prevents us, God, break it down. Let us repent of it, turn away from it, and move towards you. God, we love you. Thank you for everyone on this call. Please continue to bless them. Heal them where they need to be healed. Strengthen them where they need to be strengthened. Bless them where they need to be blessed. God, we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen.